This is Jerry in Tucson again. I am uh, uh, doing this video for a guy named Jimmy on one of the clubs I belong to. He uh, was questioning uh, that he had a golf ball size uh, 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 void in uh, one of his pieces and what can I do with this? Well, my suggestion to him would be to take that golf ball size uh, piece that he had and find himself a branch on a dead tree, or not a dead tree, but a dead branch in a tree. Get it? This is not golf ball size. This is quite a ways from being that. And drive it in there, drive it in as deep as it will go, and then cut it off flush with the OD. If, if he has an ID like what I have on this one here, cut it almost flush also. Glue it in with CA and then take uh, turquoise and or whatever uh, filler that you use, fill in around it to make it look like it's a lot more natural than a big giant hole. But in this particular case right here, I've been looking ex expressly for elbows. I would call that an elbow. And it fits this thing here pretty good. Let's see, it's like this, I think. Oh, I had it like so, I think. Oh, I broke it. <laughs> oh, here we go. I had it like this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this piece of wood at a mark I have right here and right here. And I'll be right back. And then I'll just do a simulation of what I'm doing. So I'll be right back. <coughs> Now, I like using the elbows and things because they have a little bit of character. Uh, this little tiny piece of wood right here has some uh, character inside of it. Palo Verde is normally just a plain old bland uh, uh, wood. You can see Palo Verde is normally this right here. Nothing there. The blue Palo Verde, uh, I'm starting to find out, it always has color in it. And this has color. You can't see it on this one, but... Uh, uh, there is color. So what I'm going to do with this elbow here is drop that thing in there like just about right there. Drop in some CA glue so when... Uh, I, I'm not going to do this yet because this, this piece is still drying considerably. Glue it in and then I'll take my filler and fill all around this. And something else that I also mentioned is if you've got a piece that uh, has a, a little bit larger hole than you like, you can take a little tiny piece like this and wedge down in there and it's going to have a little tree ring and the pith circle just like uh, all the other wood that you use. And so it's going to look like a, a little uh, eye. So you can do this too if you don't have uh, enough filler. This piece right here fills this piece of wood quite uh, good. and. I have this in here because it's still drying. Whoa, it's taking on some nice shape right in through here. But it needs to uh, dry before I do any more turning to it. But uh, let's see. There's some of the color. It's also molding in here. So the color goes down this way and out that way. But it's starting to mold and I'm going to give this another week in here in a bag. It's in a paper bag. So, but that's the plan is to take this piece and put it in here and work that. And when it's done, it's going to look more natural than taking, uh, putting in a gob of turquoise or uh, whatever uh, filler that most people would be using. So that's my technique and that's what I like to do. Now, whether it's a good technique or not, that's up to whoever sees it. If they like it, then it's good. If not, then it's just too bad. But I try to get pointers whenever I can, and if, if this will help you, Jimmy, you're good to go. Thanks.